Ms. Olson to take the floor. Madam. Thank you. Thank you very much for this opportunity to speak. And thank you, world family, so much of you gathering here. Thank you for listening. And I want to thank Matt because he's agreed to help with my slides, but you must understand this is my talk. His talk will come later. Um, nuclear is war of human consequences. The Cold War promised us mutual destruction. Cities were made targets. Vaporizing large numbers of people was the strategy. We now know that even limited use of nuclear weapons would cause global damage. It's my job to give a summary of the medical consequences of using nuclear weapons, and I want to tell you that my slides will be posted online with citations and references. A nuclear explosion is composed of three types of energy, blast, heat, and radiation. All of these have immediate as well as longer-term impacts. I'm using four icons to track these. Yellow is blast, red is thermal, orange is gamma neutron radiation, and purple is persistent, longer-lasting radioactivity. More than 2,000 nuclear explosions have already occurred. Every single one has caused harm. Our planet is contaminated even without waging a full-scale nuclear war. I'm asked to talk about the medical consequences of actually using nuclear weapons, and so I will be focusing on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. More than 150,000 people were killed in the first short period, and we heard earlier today 250,000 over time. We heard Satsuko's own personal story. I must for a moment take a personal acknowledgement as well. My government chose to use the first nuclear weapons on cities full of people. And five years later, the U.S. initiated a study of the survivors, and the researchers believed that medical aid would skew the results of that study, and no aid was given. This data is used widely that came from that study, including by me here today. And so, as only one woman, I must say I'm very sorry. I regret this history. Nagasaki, 1945, the church is in both frames. Today, this size of bomb would be considered tactical or small. First is the shock wave. Pressure waves form in living tissue. The body's lungs and other membranes rupture. Internal bleeding and embolisms cause death. A Hibakusha from Nagasaki made this painting from memory. Temperatures are as hot as the surface of the sun, remote, resulting in immolation, asphyxiation, burns. The heat creates winds up to 800 kph, leveling everything. A dose of ionizing radiation of 4.5 grays is considered lethal. These levels far exceed that. If not shielded, flesh is literally cooked. The acute failures of the human body come in three forms, the cerebrovascular syndrome, the gastrointestinal syndrome, and the hematopoietic syndrome. This photo was taken from the plane that dropped the bomb on Hiroshima. It is a mistake to say it is a photo of a bomb. This cloud is what was moments before buildings, trees, homes, girls, boys, women, and men. And this was the city of Nagasaki. Nuclear weapons are inherently indiscriminate. At least 150,000 men, women, and children died in 1945 from these two nuclear weapons, and over time, many more. Now we turn our attention to those who survived those first months. Families and homes were gone, and social infrastructure gone. There was little help for those suffering from injury or burns. Most of the medical communities perished in the initial blast. Today's weapons are very much larger. 
The blast will pulverize everything. The fireball burns this, and then the updraft sucks the particles high into the atmosphere, creating a shroud. Without direct sunlight, green plants cannot grow well. Agricultural crops and natural ecosystems fail. In the event of a full-scale nuclear war, these climate impacts would be global and called nuclear winter. International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War have published a number of papers on climate impacts of even a limited war, most recent of which projects a staggering two billion deaths from what was, is now called nuclear famine. I'm going to skip and skip. Radiation is invisible, but we see the damage it has done to these chromosomes. Some traditional communities in Australia say the same thing by these words. Radiation breaks the stories our bodies hold that keep us healthy. Damaged sto stories can be passed on to our children. Radiation impacts our cells. When reproductive cells are harmed, deformations are one outcome. This happens to all babies, plants, animals, humans, we also suffer loss of fertility, spontaneous abortion and miscarriage, heritable mutations, and avoidance of reproduction due to uncertainty. Cancer is the most studied consequence of non-lethal exposures of radiation. When genetic material is damaged, sometimes our bodies can repair that damage. Other times, the damage sits and waits for years or even decades before we become sick. In general, more radiation equals more cancer risk. However, even an exposure so small it cannot be measured may result in death. Children's bodies are small, so the same amount of radiation delivers a larger dose. And since their cells are dividing, they're more vulnerable. This is a very famous report published in 2006, The Biological Effects of Ionizing Radiation. It has the data that I am going to use for the uh, subsequent findings. The report is primarily from the survivors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The survivors were grouped by the age they were at the time of the bomb. These groups were trapped over their lifetimes. Cancers and cancer deaths were counted. There are many problems with this data, but broadly we can say that the people who were five years or younger in 1945 had the most cancer at some point in their lives. In this group, girls were twice as likely, girls were twice as likely to get cancer as were boys. So for every boy who got cancer, a girl got cancer at some point in their lives. The Beer 7 report is where these numbers are found, but the report does not discuss gender as a risk factor. I published my findings in 2011 and was preceded in 2006 by an independent study by Dr. Arjun Makajani, which we'll hear more about later. Here is the same information in graphical form. Pink is female, blue is male. It is very easy to see the gender difference and that it is greatest in young children. This entire graph is essentially a snapshot of the human family cancer response to radiation. And I need to say that we believe this would apply to any cancer exposed population including places we hear about, Marshall Islands, St. George, Utah, Semit Palatinsk, excuse me, I mispronounced that, all the test areas, and places like Fukushima. So little girls are not a subpopulation. We are an inextricable part of the human life cycle. And gender was also a factor for cancer among those who were adults at the time of the bombing. Over their lifetime, women exposed as adults suffered 50% more cancer than did men in the same group. For every two men in those groups who died of cancer, three women died of cancer. And we skip and skip. Yes, thank you. This is a picture of health. These women recently stopped a nuclear waste dump from coming to their traditional lands. Radiation prevention is more than avoiding harm. It is a source of health and empowerment.
And we know these words, but today in Vienna, I want to say them in a new way. Prevention is the cure. One more. This in our hands. Thank you so much for everybody who is working to bring this process forward.